Hey, it's Joel. We're in the studio and we've got something cool going on because I've got a bunch of stuff to show you. In fact, this is one of the things because this is 3D printed speakers part two. Let's do it. There you are. Uh, welcome back. So you remember this part. In fact, <laughs> This is the part we printed on the 3D Platform 300 Series Workbench Pro in the garage in Filament One Filament. And uh, we had some issues, to say the least, but I've printed a second one, because what good are speakers unless you have a pair? This is in Filament One. This is like a glint. They're glint PLA. I think it is, and it looks fantastic. It's on the G Max 2. It took a long, long time to do this, and I'll explain why later but we need to get this off the build plate. There we go. Oh, that was satisfying and easy. Let's take a look. Look at that. That is fantastic. It does have some discrepancies uh, right here, right here, a little bit of lifting, but you can definitely see the name, Simon Ashton, designed by, it's just, I love it. It just says, it says he's just some guy you know. A little bit of stringing, just a little bit right there, but that's okay. We'll take a closer look at that as soon as we get the other prints. Look at those! <laughs> the CraftBots worked tirelessly to make those, and now let's go get those off the build plates. <laughs> Here's CraftBot on the right, and this is done in Filament One, Glint, PLA. I think other than the stringing, just first glance, it looks fantastic, and it took 11 days to print this. CraftBots have that flexible build plate with capped on tape. I added some Vision Miner's nanopolymer adhesive. It held on pretty good. Let's see what happens here. I always forget there's acrylic here and I can't stick my hand through. Oh, and just like that. <laughs> wow, it's so heavy. Oh, have a look. Look at it. That's great. That's great. The surface quality is fantastic. You can see the back there, but listen. A little bit of stringing, that's okay, that's okay. Well, let's get the other print off the CraftBot and take a look at that as well. So here's CraftBot 2, stringy. Again, stringing seems to be the name of the game. These were both printed and, well, they both started at roughly the same time, so this took 11 days as well. But there's a layer shift. Oh, there's a layer shift at like day seven. Oh, okay, other than that, Ah, oh, dang it, here, take a look. Look at that. I mean, it's, it's as clear as day. It's a, it's a, it's a layer shift. Oh, God dang it. But other than that, stringing is abysmal. I can take care of that. Structurally, it's okay. Okay, let's take a look at these prints. Got my little red chair. For those that have been to the studio, the little red chair is a uh, little, it's a little red chair. The camera's kind of far back. I have to apologize for that, but there's a reason. And so what I wanna do first, before we dive into these, is I just, I kinda wanna show you what these are supposed to look like. And we don't have all of the pieces here. There's still a cap, but we're super, super duper close. There's these little registration marks at the top and they align with holes at the bottom. And I think I can just set that like that. I can set that like that. Oh my gosh, look at this, this is. <laughs> and then, uh, so this still has some brim around it, at least, yeah. it should line up just fine with those registration marks. It does, I wonder if this one lines up. It does, it still does. It's, uh, <laughs> it's not as precise of a fit as that over there, but, it kind of lines up. God, these are huge. I sit down and I'm like, I'm like, whoa, these are huge. Well, how about this? Um, let me give you a, a closer peek at these prints because I've got a really cool up close lens that should give you an idea. And then we'll also investigate this layer shift. First up, these right here. I showed you these before in the garage. I wasn't able to get too close though. And I want to give you an idea of the, the print quality that is here. And so I've got a, a macro lens and you should be able to get an idea of the print quality of the face. Now, 
unfortunately, because the layer lines are so thick, this uh, might need some work because it's going to be what people see. But if you look, the sidewall there is, is fantastic. It's really, really good. You know what, I'm gonna step around and I can get you on this side right here. Look at that. It's not perfect, but it's really, really good for what it is. I mean, <laughs> you can't forget. You can't forget, it's a, it's a Joel bot speaker. Let's take a look at the good one first. So the G Max did a phenomenal job of printing that piece. Look we'll right down there. I mean, it looks really good. It looks really, really good. One of the things, let's see if I can see it. So there is a bit of a, I believe it lifted in the back, just a smidge. And so we get that line right there. But other than that, we've got ourselves quite a good piece. In fact, I just want to make sure that we can see this. Oh, it's perfect. Look at that. Designed by Simon Ashton. He's just some guy you know. Oh, uh, I, I misspoke. It's not a tweet or a mid-range and a sub. It looks like it's an upper range and then a lower range sub. And this is for access to controls, I believe. And so those are gonna sit there. This is all gonna have 3D gloop kind of compressed inside here and, and adhering it, kind of welding it together. I thought about using super glue, but I don't think that's going to be, I don't think that's gonna be uh, the best option. <laughs> I don't have any place to put all this stuff. So uh, now we've got this. Uh, we got this, let's just take that off first. Then let's have a look. Print quality seems to be good until we get to that layer shift right there. Boy, what happened? What happened right there? That's amazing. It even transfers into this little middle piece right there and then over to there. Luckily, it's not too much of a layer shift. And I mean, a little furry, but that's, that's all stuff that's easily knocked down. In fact, there we go. I mean, this I can I can run something along the sides here to clean this up. I can I can use a flame to clean it up. As long as the structure's okay, minus this layer shift, we should be good to go. Uh, it wasn't always like this though. So before I talked about failures with the really big machine in the garage, and a lot of people had some questions as to whether or not it was going to work, and I guess we're going to find out. The G Max though performed well, and we took a look at that piece, but it wasn't always like that. At one point, I had teased on Twitter that I had a massive print going and it was going, it was going, it was going. And then one day I walked in and it was like this. Uh, I'm so sad. I'm so, so sad because I love the colors. I love the layout. I was using filaments that I'd already had laying around and um, I guess it just wasn't meant to be. Jeez, look at this. Look at this. So unfortunately, <laughs> this failed. Oh my gosh, look at it. Jeez. You know, it was looking pretty good. It was, uh, I had some blues, I had some golds, I had some greens. I mean, it was looking fantastic. And this, this blue was going good. And then it was just a massive, massive failure. So I did have a failure on the G Max, but it did print again and it did look good. Oh, you know what? I didn't let you look at this one. This. This is the one that's probably the best. And honestly, this is from a machine that had zero failures. So the craft bot on the right, zero failures. And it just printed that. I'm not gonna consider the stringing a failure. That's gonna be settings. And I, I could have, honestly, I didn't calibrate this. I just stuck the filament in and I was like, go, because I wanted to get it done. And so that's what happened. But honestly, I mean, it looks good. And up top, this is where the, the cap is gonna go, right there. The cap is gonna be printed on the Project R3D Daedalus, and you'll see that. Well, that's it, this is part two. We got to pull the print from the G Max, and it looked good, and, but there was that one print that didn't look so good. We were able to pull both prints from the CraftBot machines. One of them had a layer shift, unfortunately, but both went for 11 days. 11 days, not so shabby. Things seem to fit, 
and it looks like we are primed and ready to have a part three, which is assembly and test. And I can't wait. This is gonna be amazing. A big thanks to Filament One for this awesome filament. They had a big sale and I bought a bunch. Uh, this was on the G-Max 2 and both CraftBot Flow IDX XL machines. I look forward to seeing you on part three. Keep your fingers crossed for me, would you? Hug each other more from a safe distance. High five.